night's edition of Face to Face coming to you direct from our News First studios in Colombo. For the News First team, as always, I am Jaimal Ratnayaka. And on the new look Face to Face, which will be running for almost an hour, we have two guests in our studios this evening. Kesar Lal Gunasekara, former Member of Parliament representing the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, and also Rehan Jayavikrama from the Samagi Zanapala Vega and also the former chairman of the Valigama Local Authority. Very good evening to you gentlemen and welcome back on the show. Very good evening. Good evening. So to kick off tonight's conversation, I want to uh, speak to Mr. Kunasekara first of all regarding the, the sad state of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, once uh, Grand Party of Sri Lanka, now Grand in Strong Party, Grand yeah. Strong Party, which is now in tatters. Yeah with two factions claiming ownership of that party yes. at loggerheads and there's a tug of war going on. What do you make of this? Well, the question is, I still feel if everybody is interested in the SLFP, hmm. they need to come together yes. and work out an arrangement as to how they are going to move forward. Hmm. Without that, because two factions are not going to be the answer hmm. uh, to take the party forward. But at the same time, it's, I mean, I do not know as to whether they are keen to have discussions hmm. Uh, to join hands, mm. but I still feel that's the only way because if you if you have two fac factions moving in opposite directions, mm. you the the party suffers, mm. the CDP party suffers. So it's far more better to uh, get together, mm. maybe a, a team. Um, because all these uh, people who have gone to the port to a party mm. are fundamentally CDP uh, and. Um, Porto is no more. Mm. Fundamentally, I don't think they they can ever contest an election. I see. Uh, in that backdrop, I feel it's far more better for them to come back mm. to the to the fold mm. and maybe get together and iron out your differences and work up. Because whatever you do mm. is for the country, huh? not for individuals, mm. not for groups. It has to be for the country. Yeah. Parties are there for the country, mm. not for individuals or groups. Right. So, Rehan, Mr. Gunasekar brought out a very important fact. He said, uh, a rather alarming fact, he said that the SLPP is no more and uh, that they don't have a mandate. But uh, during the SLPP's May Day rally, there were rallying cries by those who were present there. And they said that you can't see the crowd here because we are the only party who organized uh, a May Day rally at a park. And there are so many people who are waiting outside that can't get in, which is why we can't show our numbers. What is your opinion being, the, being a representative of the main opposition? I think we have all seen the amount of crowds that the SLPP even pulled in 2015. Mm. I don't think crowds uh, per se reflects what election results could be, and that is clearly visible in the 2015 elections, SLPP was bringing mass crowds and mm. they still lost to uh, the former president, Maitri Palasiri Sena. So I really don't think crowds are anything to go by. And another example that we can use is that the JVP has always bought the biggest crowds traditionally in May Day. Mm. And uh, they have failed to secure enough uh, parliament seats throughout. I don't know whether that's going to be the case next time. But again, I don't think that crowds should reflect anything. And I also think that the reason that the SLPP had it there mm. is because that place gets packed up with a small crowd. Mm. And uh, we all know how bringing crowds work. And, uh, you know, they stuck to that. Mm. So talking about uh, May Day rallies, if that is anything to go by, based on your own individual opinions, who do you think garnered the most number of uh, support? Do you believe it is the SAV or did you see there were certain crowds for the NPP's rally. There were crowds at the. You're talking about the numbers that yes, attended. The numbers. Numbers if, that attended. Mm. Numbers. I, I think NPP has had bigger numbers. Mm. But uh, he, he had a point. You know, uh, it all depends on whether you know, when it when it comes to politics in Sri Lanka, there are certain parties uh, you might not be able to get large number of uh, uh, party supporters coming to uh, witness meetings, mm. but they will vote. But when it comes to certain parties, they, ma they need to show a lot of strength mm. at ma party meetings to get a smaller number of votes. That so is always there. Understood. That's, that's, that's always there. Understood. So if there is an election this year, most probably a presidential election, Rehan, we need grassroots level activity for any party. And the SJB, we know, like any other party, has been active in the grassroots. And you were the former uh, 
chairman of the Valigama local authority. So you are also very much connected and you're also the organizer for that area at present in that electorate. What sort of uh, structuring has been going on for the impending election? How have you been rallying your supporters, giving them the necessary confidence to vote for your presidential candidate? First of all, I must clearly state that the next election is going to be between the SJB and the NPP. Mm. That's the ground level reality. I see. And uh, I'm not saying that's because the NPP is on a better footing. I'm just saying because of the inadequacies of the SLPP and sometimes the failures of the SLFP and also the unpopularity of the incumbent, mm. um, you know, it's, it, it's going to be a fight. Mm. It's going to be a fight. But then again, I think uh, Mr. Kesarlal, who is a much more experienced politician than me, mm. who's been doing politics since 1977, I think he's, he will also agree with the fact that uh, Sri Lankan elections are very tough to call mm. until the end stages. For example, we never thought that Maitri Palasiri Sena would be the candidate in 2015. So a lot can change mm. uh, between that, uh, between the time the elections that are period. called and the one month. Mm. So all that remains to be seen. But right now, the front runners are the SJB and the NPP. Mm. And uh, we'll have to see how it goes closer to the election date. Mm. But so we are confident of winning. Mm. I have to, not only do I have to say that, but I also believe that we can win. Mm. Because I think that we have the best team to win the election. Mm. And I don't think the NPP has that team, but then again, that's my opinion. But I think we are on a solid footing at the moment. So you represent the more youthful aspect of the Samkizana Balavega, someone who even I could relate to. Can you let our more youthful viewers or the younger viewers of Face to Face know, even personally to me, can you let me know what sort of a plan the SJB has to secure our futures, Rehan, should you come to power? Uh, Jayamal, the SJB has already presented our economic manifesto, which mm. is called the Blueprint. Mm. Uh, our election manifesto is not ready as yet because that comes closer to the election. Mm. But we will obviously be going by somewhat the same principles that we ran in 2019. Um, we have a good team and that is very, very important. Mm. Uh, we have top economists in our team. Uh, we have people who are uh, used to governing a country. Uh, we have a majority of people who we can call clean. Mm. Uh, and we also have a leader that believes in the team. Mm. Uh, so I'm not a person that believes in one person, you know, being the savior. Mm. I think it has to be a mix. And that mix has to be a form of good leadership and also a good team. Mm. Again, I don't see that in the NPP because I think the NPP is again uh, a, a showcase of uh, what the uh, Pohotua did in 2019 by putting in front the Vyat Magar. I see. So it's because of the fact that the JVP has chosen the NPP to attract uh, the urban class mm. and the intellectual the intellectual vote. Um, so to the youngsters, all what I can say is that we have a economic blueprint that's mm. available in our party website. It's available in, in uh, so many forms. You could you, you know if you request, we could even give one from the party office. Mm. So that blueprint clearly states where we are going to go as a country, mm. and. Uh, that's what people have to believe in. People have to believe in manifestos, even though politicians have broken mm. manifesto promises over and over again. Uh, they must believe in our manifesto because I think our manifesto is the one that can put the country back on track. Again, I don't think it's an easy job. I don't think it's a two, three year job. Mm. I think whoever takes government, it'll be about a five year journey where we get back on track. I see. Mr. Gunasekara, Rehan pointed out that uh, in his opinion, the NPP and the SJB are the front runners for vying for presidency. But Maitripala Sirisena has announced that uh, Vijay Dasa Rajpaksa will be the presidential candidate of the SLFP, at least from their faction. What do you make of all this? Well, the question is very difficult for me to mention and state as to where we stand as, a, as, to, as of today because uh, mm. all these things will, will definitely dif take a different turn when the elections are, mm. uh, are announced. So we'll have to wait for, wait for that time. But what he said is that at the moment, mm. the two two major leading parties have to be are SJB and NPP, which mm. is correct. There is nothing wrong in that. Mm. But um, it all depends as to whether what type of things, uh, what type of discussions, etc., mm. what um, pi uh, what um, parties would do mm. uh, in between now and a calling of an election. We don't know whether other parties would come into an alliance with with so many others, we don't know. But we, we cannot uh, say for sure. Now. Yeah. Mm. But the discussions will go on. Because there are so many mm. other parties involved in this, mm. uh, which they, there's the side of the, the Tamil parties. Mm. 
the Muslim parties, they are also silent. Yes. They have not said anything. Mm. So we don't know. We, it all depends. But when, it, when the elections are announced, then I'm sure I'll be in a position to say, look here, who's going to win? Mm. It's not that, uh, that it, it's not a difficult exercise. But you represent the SLFP. Would you rather have your candidate from the SLFP? That is always the case. The no, yes. yes. I represent a party. I would prefer mm. an SLFP candidate. And you yeah. mentioned that uh, there are certain coalitions and alliances that come about when it's election season. Yeah, yeah. Do that you believe, always happens. Do you believe the, the crisis within the SLFP is being orchestrated by a certain party to align the SLFP or rather majority of the SLFP with another party? That, that, that is being discussed at various quarters. Mm. I, we do not know exactly right. what From it is. what you are but I aware still of? Feel, but I still feel that everybody needs to come together. Mm. You know, division is not going to be the answer. SLAP division is not going to be the answer. Mm. They need to get together. They are formidable if they get together. Mm. If they are not, they, they, they will die a natural death. So suppose they do get together and yeah. eventually agree on uh, Vijay Das Rajpaksa being their president. Whoever it is, yeah. Yes, let's assume it is Vijay Das Rajpaksa. Do you think he will have the public support or he will be able it to be a, a fierce competitor for the SAB and the NPP? It, it all depends on what are the, who are the other parties who are going to support us. Mm. It all depends on that. Right. That's, uh, but, you know, as, I as, say a, as a character, as, as a personality. I, as I say, mm. it is several parties coming into an alliance yes. which can be a strong force mm. because uh, as it is SJB and in, uh, NPP have shown that they are a mm. strong force huh? they have already established yes but at the same force. time the candidate is, that you put forth is yeah. also a determining factor now no, the opposition leader no, the, the, the support mm. that that candidate is going to have in terms of other parties in terms are they also aligning themselves with, with our but with at our the same time the presidential candidate of who, whichever party has his or her own voter base. So, do you believe Vijaydas Rajpaks would not, be the not, right candidate? No, not to that degree. Hmm. It's a support of the parties and the alliance. Do you agree it's it's a collection or the presidential no, candidate think, also think, brings I, a certain amount of... I think Mr. Kesalal is right. Hmm. Uh, it all depends on the alliance. I'll give you a good example. Hmm. The estate votes, hmm. uh, that's a big factor. Right. And for that we have an alliance partner. In yes. the north and east votes, mm. the TNA will play a deciding factor. Mm. So, like he it's said, it's, a, it's, a, it's alliances it's that alliance. will do it. Mm. So, in this uh, process of coalition building and creating alliances, how has the SJB been faring these days? Have you been reaching out to parties that you would not really not align yourself with and asking them for their support? Lots of people have lots of things to say mm. about certain members of the SLPP that we took in. Mm. But I think when it comes to politics, it's very difficult to filter out everyone. Mm. There are certain members that we had to take in. Um, some of those appointments I may not disagree. I may disagree with, but then again, the party made that decision and as a party member, I will stick by those lines. Mm. But alliances are very important. But we have to be very careful of not tainting ourselves with too many people who have been associated with the SLPP. Mm. Because I think the next vote mm. will be an anti-Rajpaksha vote. Mm. It will be an anti-SLPP vote. Mm. Much as the same in 2020 where it was anti-UMP, it was anti-Ranil Vikram Singh vote, mm. which is why they got, uh, they didn't get a single candidate. Yes. So we have to be very careful about the things, uh, the people we get in. But I think that there are certain political parties, including the SLFP, where there are people like Mr. Kesal going to say, I think that we should tap as a party. Mm. Where these all very good, decent politicians who, have, who are not tainted with corruption. Mm. So more of him and uh, less, less of, of the that. other people in the SLPP. But mm. I think that there are certain people that we may have to take. Mm. Because one common allegation that has been made against the SAB is that when there are defectors from the ruling party, the SLF, SLPP, the SAB has t taken some of them in and what the people are saying on the roads or the street is that it's the same person in a different light, it's the same wine in different bottles. So where do you change that I from have to, I have to just make minds, something right? clear there. For example, mm. There are two members of the SLFP that uh, joined us and obtained membership of the SJB. Mm. That is Chandima Virakodi and Shan Vijaylal Silva. Yes. Both of them, they are not part of an alliance, they are part of the SJB. Mm. They are relevant organizers in the, the Gold District. Yes. The others who came in, mm. came in as a part of an alliance and I that see. was about four or five. Mm. We are looking at the SLPP which has a number of 150 odd plus. Right. So I think that even though some of those appointments may be questionable, mm. In the broader scheme of things, 
we have not accepted many people who have want to come to us mm. and i don't think it's right to mention their names mm. because we have to have some sort of integrity yes but there have been many of them who have tried to join us that we haven't taken they have approached you they have approached us many mm. of them i can tell you more than 20 30 slpp members have approached us i'm not even going to name one of them mm. it's not right none yes. of them are here yes certainly but uh, we had to filter out and there are certain people that we had to take because they came in with other coalition members as well mm. and that coalition wouldn't have joined us if there were one or two that we didn't take mm. so i'm not going to mention the names of the questionable people but this had to be done mm. i don't think it will affect our vote base in any way and i think it's up to the people to decide even if they are running from our side mm. who they are going to choose to represent them or not that again is the choice of the people yes and if the people want to defeat them so be it if the mm. people want to get them into parliament so be it but that again is part of the people's franchise right so rehan coming to the status quo currently what's happening in sri lanka something that made headlines over the past week or so was the visa issue at the airport in katunaika this was uh, a major it turned into a major issue after the video that was uh, recorded by an onlooker at the airport went viral and now it has come to a point where even the president's attention the cabinet the parliament's attention has been drawn to this i want to ask you from a standpoint as the former uh, urban councillor of the or rather the chairman of the velagam urban council which is a tourist hotspot how these sort of instances hurt sri lanka's tourism what did you make of it from a standpoint of a chairman of a tourist hotspot being valigama as far as i know vfs is there in countries mm. where you get countries for example vfs represents many countries in sri lanka if a sri lankan wants to get uh, a a a visa to go to the uk yes. they do apply to the vfs mm. that is because uk you uh, visa regulations for example are very tight you have to show a certain amount in your bank now what's puzzling to me is mm. why they are handling a visa which is not hard to get the sri lankan is it today yeah the, 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 sorry which is easy to get yes thank you for correcting me sir <laughs> yeah. because the sri lankan visa mm. is probably one of the easiest visas easiest in the world way. to get mm. so why is it that a foreign company was allowed to do that mm. again i have no idea why because it's something that the immigration officials have handled all this mm. time and it is not something that was brought uh, uh, into parliament it was something passed by cabinet then you have to ask yourself then what is the sovereignty of parliament then mm. what is parliament there for mm. because parliament is the one that handles public finance yes. the committee of public finance committee of public enterprise mm. all of these things are within the purview of parliament mm. so i really don't want to go too deep into it because i don't know the specifics of it yes. yeah but i'm sure that uh, you know in the time to come mm. uh, we will find out but then i also heard something very interesting today mm. I heard that the issue is not with VFS but there are two other companies involved here. That's it. Tripartite agreement, yeah. Exactly. Mm. And I heard that one of the representatives of that is a very prominent SLPP governor's mm. son. So I'm not going to mention the names, mm. but I think that will come out soon. So this so has to be dug into mm. and then we found to be a serious it's a serious issue. Mm. So Mr. Gunasekar I also I want to direct that question at you as well because you have seen yeah. flimsy decisions of this nature being made time and time again regardless of the government so I want to know your opinion as well you know the question is I I still feel if I go into this matter mm. I always uh, believe that ministers parliamentarians must have uh, qualities which can pull, pull them through any issue you know number one is ethics mm. very important common sense integrity mm. and conscience if these as four aspects are there in a minister or a politician he can always perform mm. ethics common sense integrity mm. uh, and uh, conscience conscience mm. because with these four mm. you can do wonders if you go into this aspect of this uh, particular saga mm. you realize whoever decided on this mm. does not have any of those uh. <laughs> does not have any of those because number one mm. we are struggling to get tourists into our country mm. why do we have to charge mm. an exorbitant amount of money from them who is going to collect it is a different issue but why do you want to mm. charge we ask people companies to come and invest in sri lanka mm. and we give them tax holidays why Why do we give the tax holidays? Yes. Because those investments are required for this country, mm. which is important for this country. Mm. That's why we do that. So when we ask tourists to come, we want them to come. Mm. 
Why do they? I mean, it, it is not a situation where 10, 15 million come to Sri Lanka today, mm. no? Mm. That's not the case. Certainly. It's roughly about 2.5 2 million. So, in order to attract them, mm. why raise those uh, visa fees? Visa and fees. most of the fees are not coming back to Sri our coffers, huh? Exactly. Taken yeah. back. You know, yeah. coming back to our coffers. That's the most yes. important thing. Mm. So these are not decisions mm. that should have been. And I always say, mm. cabinet system of governance, Rihanna, I've always said this, cabinet system of governance is perfect, mm. provided the people who handle this subject mm. have those four qualities. Today, we have proved mm. cabinet system of governance in Sri Lanka is abject failure. Mm. Abject Absolutely. failure. Why? Because nobody goes into these things. Mm. Cabinet decisions is not a thing there you 10-15 people sit and decide. Mm. No. It has to go through many hands, yes. many minds, mm. many heads. Yes. And then only finally you decide, okay, this is good, this is good for this country. If you can't do those things, don't take those decisions. Huh? Because those affect for the for maybe 10-15 years. Mm. Those are wrong decisions. So we we I realized that from day one, this is an absolute disaster mm. as far as Sri Lanka is concerned. As he said, VFS gets involved in so many processes, yes. but it is a facilitator. Mm. Always any country, visa is granted by the immigration department. Nobody else gets involved in that. Whoever comes to this country, whether it goes through any process, you can say, online process, all those processes, but the stamping is done by the immigration department mm. officials. Nobody else can do that. So, to do that, mm. why do you want VFS, etc., to handle all these matters? Third party coming in. There is no necessity whatsoever. I feel that's a big mistake and I, I was told that it was in parliament as well uh, last year. It was approved in parliament. Yes. It is very shocking, mm. but m for me, the shocking this thing is as to how did it go through cabinet yeah. when we see a minister mm. who's angry about this presentation but he would have been there mm. in pal in the cabinet yes. at that time mm. he then he would have given his consent as well he would have given his consent as well why because you have not gone through mm. this uh, decision at all you must go through and and then uh, uh, find out as to whether it is good for the country mm. number one I mean, it is good for the tourists who are coming. I mean, are they going to promote Sri Lanka? Mm. I mean, you charge, you were charging 25 or 30, became 50 and now it becomes 100. Mm. It's good that the cabinet decided to go back to 50. Mm. But I still feel they have to go in through this whole process mm. and take action as to how this happened all of a sudden. These are things that the government of Sri Lanka has to do. Huh? Mm -hmm. So we've reached an interesting phase on uh, face to face this evening, but we have to cross over for a short commercial break. Do stick, uh, stay tuned to face to face. We'll be right back. News first, face to face with Jamal Ratnayaka. Because when we take a loan or when any loan is being taken, we automatically go into a evaluation point. The sex absence of any knowledge with regard to sexual education. Now, those two are key pillars. Transparent ways of showing uh, how money is spent, we are doomed. Even when the LTT was in operation, when there was actually a civil terrorism issue going on in the country, we didn't have these laws. Then the question is, why do we need these laws? So this has brought down the total GDP by about 25% in dollar terms, which was around 90 billion. Now it's around, hovering around 70 billion. There are particular focus areas that I think evolve um, based on the binational commission. So like the self-esteem is really, really low. Like they don't believe anymore. Okay, I can do something about that. So anymore, there's no any decision making about that and very passive. With regards to state land. So I think this will carry huge repercussions for the future. I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to the house.
विश्वास My cabinet minister secretary even to get a small thing passed. That's the, a different question. The authorities uh, are there. Why aren't the you going in? The integrity was compromised by the bribery commission. The chairman of the power party does not attend when you all sign the MOU with GLP. He said Nala Kudeva, which is quite important. Who was trying to safeguard the robbers of See, central bank? We know in Sri Lanka there are was issues. While the was going there. on, people wanted Gotabe, right? People elected him. But what we can see is that it has certainly stalled. There is no public record of what these cases were. In particular, the things are very severe when President is also the Minister of Finance. I will give you a post how it came about. It was not argued in the Parliament. It was not even put in the Cabinet. It was forced down the throat of the people of this country without an election. News first, face to face with Jamal Ratnayaka. Welcome back to Face to Face. I am in conversation with Mr. Kesra Gunasekara and Mr. Rehan Zaya Vikrama. We've reached a very interesting point in our episode this evening. Mr. Gunasekara, before we crossed over for the break, you brought out four features that a successful politician must have or a policymaker must have. And for or official, for, or that official for that matter. And in the interest of our viewers, I'll mention those uh, four features, which are ethics, integrity, common sense, and conscience. But in the modern day, the modern politician, if you do, if they no. do a self-reflection, I don't think they will find either of those features. No. And that brings me to my question, if, yeah. you, if you allow me, to, to ask Rehan, back in the day, in the 60s, 70s and the 80s, or even the 90s for that matter, Sri Lanka had statesmen. We had the Atulat Mudalis, the Gamini Disanayakas, or more personally, the Montego Javikramas. People who had a stake in the country and were willing to take Sri Lanka out of where it was and onto a path of prosperity. But now, being in politics is merely a business. It is access to do anything you want with impunity and get away scot free even if you are exposed. And earn money. And earn money at the same time. Where did Sri Lanka go wrong, Rehan? In your, I want to know the opinions of two generations, firstly from Rehan and Mr. Gunasekar as well. Did the voters get it wrong or did the politicians realize that this is a gold mine that they can extract from and they went astray? Where did we go wrong? In my opinion, and I may be wrong, I think the landmark thing that went wrong was the preferential voting system. Hmm. Why do you say that? I hmm. say that because prior to 1977, um, an MP would be responsible only for that particular electorate that they represent, much like the Westminster system. Yes. It was not possible to cross over mm. then. But then subsequently, once this preferential voting system came in place, m big money started going around. And as a person who's done politics, uh, Mr. Kesar Lal Gurusekar also knows that mm. when you run an election, mm. even if you're handed electorate, you can't just contest from that electorate. You have to get votes from all over the place. And to get those votes, you have to lie. Mm. You have to lie in different electorates, saying that, you know, you'll come there, you know, you'll work for them. But soon after the election, party mechanisms come in play, and you're not allowed to go to those electorates without the permission of the relevant organizers. Right. 
So my opinion is that it's the preferential voting system and also in a certain degree I would say uh, the unlimited powers given to the executive, mm. the checks and balances, mm. where you're immune from the law. I think both, both these things played a part, but I'm sure if I'm wrong or if I'm right, I'm sure that he can, Mr. Kesarlal can educate us even further with his points. Yes, would you like to add to that, Mr. Gonsagra? Yes, I, I, I still feel, I'm, 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 I'm agreeable to what he said about the preferential system of voting which came in after 89. I feel that was a big disaster. Mm. It was not a disaster at that time, mm. but then over the period, people started realizing, look, yeah, if you can collect uh, votes here and there, I can b come into the picture. Mm. And how how do I do that? I earn money, uh, maybe through drugs, all those things, and then still come back. Mm. And that is exactly what has happened now huh, over the years. But the question here is, number one, it is a fault of the people also. Correct. People. Mm always bring wrong politicians to power. Right. I, I can't say this openly, people, of course I'm not interested. No, in you are, you're free to say yeah, it. Because I'm not interested in contesting elections, therefore I can say it. <laughs> the people, mm. if they had correct decisions, none of these things would have happened. Number two, politicians. Number three, officials. All three mm. are in the same board. Mm. This is why we are in this rut in today's context. And the party, mm never ever wanted quality people to be promoted. Never ever wanted quality people to be promoted. Why? Because it's easy now say, I will not mention names, there have been cer certain presidents who prefer to have so and so and so mm. as ministers. Why? Because it's easy to do yes. jobs with yes. them. He does his own job, but whatever I say, they know to play the done. game. They know to play the game. Mm. This, the, the question is with us, it's so difficult. Even if the president asks me to do something wrong, I say, go to hell, I'm not going to do it. Mm. But there aren't many people like us. Yes. Huh? There aren't many people like us. Mm. Therefore, which, who suffers? The country suffers. Huh? Mm. It is a country that has suffered mm. right along by not having good people in, in power, not having good people. You know, another mistake that many people make is this process of election mm is to select an MP to perform functions at a national level. Mm. Right. Many of us mm. have made that fundamental blunder. Mm. We feel I am for Ratmalan, I am for Gaul, I am for Devinu mm. Devindara. There's no unity like there. there is, it is not, the, the question is, mm. the selection is mm. that process. Mm. But once you get selected or elected, mm. you have nothing to do with them because your area has to be handled by local authority and it is supported by the provincial council. You have no role. Mm. In all other countries, it is the same. Yes. In all other countries, it is yes. the same. But in our country, it is totally different. Mm. That is why, can you see the amount of money that is wasted? Mm. Today, member of parliament receives 100,000 rupees to have an office in his electorate. What for? He has no role in this. His job is in parliament. He has to come four days in parliament, not four days, all 30 days in parliament. Mm. His job is parliament. When we were in parliament, our role was in parliament. Huh? Not elected. When we had minister, Mr. Atulat Modili, mm. when he's not in parliament, he's in his office, ministry. Today, how many ministers work on a daily, daily basis mm. in his ministry? Huh? Mm. There are certain ministers who don't come to the ministry, not even once a month. Mm. There are certain ministers who only come once a, once a week. Right. That's why this system has gone. When that system fails, then the country fails. Mm. No wonder we ended up with being bankrupt. Mm. He, I, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not surprised. Huh? Mm. Because that's how we win. That's the way we followed. Mm. That's, that's what people have been asking for and that's what the people gave. Right. The politicians came in. They realized look here, why should we do all those things? You know, a classic, I will tell you a good story. Mm. Very recently I saw, I will not mention names. Parliamentary members cannot be given re leave to go abroad. Why? Because the election. Yes. Parliamentary members should not be permitted to go in that manner because they are work, they have to work for the country. Mm. Only during election, your leave is cancelled. What about other? What about the periods? What about the periods? Mm. He can't be going and having 
Jones in overseas over countries. What rubbish! They must work in this country. Mm. They must be always. You appoint committees, various things. Mm. If I, when I went to the Australian Parliament, mm. we were given a pep talk as to how they got people to work, members of Parliament. They are brought in mm. every six months, and you are staying. You you are provided everything. Mm. Your family, everybody is provided for. Why? Because you have to work in Parliament from four thirty to six thirty. Mm. Thereafter, you are not going back to your state. Huh? Mm. You are in Bali. It is a job after all. You have to be there. Mm. In Sri Lanka, tell me one one person who does it. Most of the time, chamber is empty. Mm. Why? Because parliamentarians have absolutely no interest in that. Their interest is something else. Ministers don't come. Mm. Ministers don't go to the ministry. Mm. You think the country can prosper? What rubbish! So we should have been bankrupt earlier. Mm. We should have been bankrupt earlier mm. for what what these people have been doing. Everybody must be held responsible. Do you think anybody is held responsible today? Mm. No. You do something wrong, you must be punished. Anybody is punished today? No. I have seen officials who have been who have done wrong things. Have they been punished? No. I have seen ministers. Yeah, I mean, just imagine. Certain ministers in present-day context, mm. uh, who have been charged in court of law, court charged in court of law, mm. but they still continue to be ministers and MPs in mm. Parliament. Mm. Where is the law in this country? There is a law for the politicians, and a different law for the average man. You can't go on. Some like have this. been sentenced to life in prison for stealing. People get, uh, co- uh, you know, even when they steal mangoes, they are remanded. Yes, yeah. mm. exactly. <laughs> So you, I mean, it, it, no wonder this country ended up where where it being is. bankrupt. Mm. How do we get it out? So Rehan, it's coming a, from it's a big question. System fail to system change, something that has been called for quite some time, especially after the Aragalia. We see and we hear many intellectual conversations during dinner parties or people we know who are suited. And suitable and are qualified to hold responsible positions, who have the integrity and the knowledge to hold positions of power and not misuse that, but to use it as a weapon to, or rather, a tool to improve Sri Lanka. Steering clear of politics because it's taboo. They don't want to be aligned with a certain party because it's either tainted or they might be branded as as a supporter of the SAB or an MPP. They will merely mention their ideas at dinner parties or social circles, but there won't be any more action beyond it. What does the SJB do apart from the brain drain that we have already experienced? At least the intellectuals and the knowledgeable. Citizens in this country who are willing and are able to work in Sri Lanka, what is the SJB's plan to integrate them into the party, to get them into positions of power, and get their support to take Sri Lanka back to where it is supposed to be? Jamal, being intellectual is one thing; mm. to have common sense is a completely different thing. Mm. Mm. I'm not going to go too much into these intellectual stories because Gotabaya Rajapaksha had a massive intellectual following. Mm. Massive conglomerate owners, mm. uh, people who were really on top in the business world who were supporting them. Mm. This is knowing the fact what happened to Lasantha. This is knowing the fact what happened to Pragyat Tengkalaykuda. What happened with Keith Noya? What happened with the Meek deal? No, people just didn't care, right? And mm. which is why I'm going back to the point which Mr. Gunasekar made. Mm. Common sense. Out of the four things he said, one was common, common sense. sense. Mm. Now have our people used common sense when they were voting? Mm. No, they did not. No. But whenever the voting goes wrong, mm. then they do a revenge vote mm. Mm. to a party that's the more, inca- more inca- yeah. incapable than other. Yes. Just to prove a point. Mm. Correct. But not following policy, mm. not following any sort of anything. So again, I'm not going to dwell t- 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 too deeply on the intellectual mm. story because in 2019, I honestly got disgusted with Sri Lankan politics mm. by the way our people voted, mm. knowing the fact who the man was. Knowing the fact what the man was capable of, knowing the fact what the man has done in the past, mm. they still voted for him. I'll give you a good example. Mm. When Mr. Sajid Premadasa challenged him for a debate, go to Abhay Paksha, what did he do? They said no, they are not going to take part in the debate. Mm. I was part of those many dinner parties that you have taken part in, where there were intellectuals saying, "Oh, we don't need a talker, we need a doer, mm. we don't need people who just speak." Mm. I mean, where in the world do you get that? 
you need to have debates mm. you need to have discourse yes you need to be able to furnish your ideas mm. you need to be able to counter the people's ideas you need to tell the people what your and ideas are and receive constructive criticism C- criticism mm. but sri lankans or a majority of them don't believe in that mm. they believe in knee jerk reaction type of voting mm. where it is very personal to them for example i don't think people in colombo would have got on the streets if those people didn't have power uh, if they didn't have power they wouldn't have got on the streets Certainly. correct yes so it's only when it started affecting their then, households yeah. that there they was the, that there was st- but that's not how we must be we must always think about the less fortunate mm. we should always think that there are people who don't have a roof above their head mm. we should think about the people who don't have smartphones mm. we have mm. to think for them mm. so if we are not thinking for them and if we are only worried about our own political journeys and if the people themselves support it then again i completely un- uh, agree with him 100% that it's also the voters responsibility mm. the voter gets what the voter deserves mm. and the voter whatever the voter votes is what the voter deserves and have sri lankans been voting smartly mm. they can't them to decide no and the, con- the state of the country where he said yeah. the country should have gone bankrupt years ago absolutely correct mm. we should have been bankrupt in 2007 2010 was when we should have declared bankruptcy but we kept on yeah. taking loans we kept on taking yeah. loans and we kept loan after loan loan, loan after, after loan, loan after loan with absolutely zero idea of how to repay it mm. why is japan not even helping us mm. now mm. because of canceling that lrt project yeah. strain times that was a that was a point something percentage that we had to pay them back yes but you know this is this is all the fault of the entire system that we have been accustomed to you spoke about knee jerk reactions and uh, revenge voting coming to maybe the education system of sri lanka to educate young minds of the importance of policy making importance of politics as a whole i believe has a role to play when they grow up and not just blindly follow who their mother or father voted for and that's where the the conversation of political apathy comes because i personally know friends in my circle who are somewhat oblivious to what is happening in the country and no disrespect to them but we need to be invested in what is happening in this country and i'm pretty sure even rehan but i know for for an instance mr gunasekara's generation was somewhat more invested but yeah. here in our generation rehan i feel like even the voters or the first time voters are somewhat disconnected from what is happening so as a young politician who is involved in policy making who is involved in making this country a better place what is your message to those voters how can they be invested how can they change this system from what their mother or father did to appoint and elect the proper people for sri lanka's betterment if i can if you can post that question to me you're going to say it just for a second yes. because there's a very interesting quote that i want to find yes. on my phone yes yes sure sure uh, which i want to read out yes sure so, so mr guru say where do you think that disconnect happened back in the day yes there was there was a certain uh, let's say alignment but now they just simply say all politicians are the same let the country go how it's running however it's running if we have fuel if we have electricity we are okay how do you change that mindset you know the question in this country is many people are totally disconnected as far as politics is concerned only during an election they come a vote basically fundamentally to get something for themselves mm. nobody votes for the country yeah nobody votes for the country as far as i'm concerned you you are voting for something for yourself or your family and this situation is extremely bad because i want people to be involved in politics to be knowledgeable in what is happening in this country today most of the youngsters are not interested in any of those things not interested you know that 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 person who made that hue and cry in in parliament mm. that is the latest form of whistle blower mm. which politicians need to understand that's the latest form of whistle blowing which is prevalent in all of the countries but not in our country that is called whistle blowing no? if even the ministers to understand that mm. is whistle whistle blowing mm. and therefore that is a positive one but the question here is when the civil society is not engaged mm. properly you have a problem why politicians can do anything they want yes why will nobody interest nobody is interested mm. no? if decisions of parliament decisions of ministries are questioned by people things will change but the question here is the younger generation are they interested in politics no why because you know why they have seen all wrong things they have heard all wrong things mm. and therefore they prefer 
No, please. David. We don't want to get in. I don't want you to go and vote, which is not, which is very bad. Huh? Yes. We, we want people to go and vote. Mm. Whether you vote for X, Y, or Z, you please go and vote. Cast your vote. Your franchise is much more important. Definitely. So the question here is, I feel even in the education system, politics must play a role. You know, p children must be told as to what politics is all about. Doing things for the country, doing things for people, doing things for humanity. Those are things that have to come into the picture. Mm -hmm. And since we have not had that in the past, we, we are, are in this state. I think Ryan is ready with this quote. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very famous quote. I think Mr. Gunasekar, you'll also agree with this. It's actually by uh, Bertolt Brecht, mm. uh, someone that, uh, mm. ironically, Mr. Rani Rikram Singh quoted by mm. talking about the parliament, the yeah. bridge and all that. Mm. So what he said was the worst illiterate is the political illiterate. He doesn't hear, doesn't speak, nor participate in the political events. He doesn't know the cost of life, the price of the bean, of the fish, of the flour, of the rent, of the shoes and of the medicine. Mm. All depends on political decisions. The political illiterate is so stupid that is that he is proud and swells his chest saying that he hates politics. The imbecile doesn't know that from his political ignorance is born the prostitute, the abandoned child and the worst thieves of all, the bad politician, mm. corrupted and flunky of the national and multinational companies. So when people say, you know, I'm not going to vote, mm. yeah. I'm, you know, against politics, you know, they don't know that everything from their Correct. toothpaste, from the time they get up to the, in the morning to the soap that they use when they have a shower in the night is all based on political decisions. Correct, correct, correct. So you, you, you cannot discount politics because politics, just like it's anything right. else, is a part and parcel of the way we live. Yeah. And determines the quality of our lives. Exactly. We must be engaged. And I want youngsters to come and shout. You know, that I don't know whether there was a decision by cabinet or whatever it is to... Uh, obtain uh, a statement from him, which mm. is all wrong. Yes. And they did. They did. Yeah. They did, but they little did they realize that they missed Mr. Gunasekar, they little did they realize they missed the wrong guy. He's from a He's family of lawyers. He's a family of lawyers, <laughs> I was told. Yeah. I mean, that, that guy, mm. that is whistleblowing. Huh? Mm. In the present day context that I call it. There's one more thing I want to mention. Mm. You know, see, we, have be, we, we have been stomaching so many things now. One is, you know, I always believe that when you are in power, when you are in control, you should not ever serve yourself, one instance, central banker, mm. serving themselves with salaries, Salary hikes. allowances. Mm. It is all wrong. Mm. Why? Because those four qualities were not prevalent mm. with them. Ma. Not even one. If those qualities were prevalent, they wouldn't, them, have, even they wouldn't have even thought about that. Because today, the country is going through mm. hell. People are going through hell. Mm. People have lost jobs. Hungry. Yeah. People yeah. can't have three meals a day. And they, they, for them, you know, I always say, parliamentarians cannot do, do it up for themselves. Mm. I am totally against uh, 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 payments made to parliament, mm. members, on the decisions made by cabinet, because mm. they are part of it. Mm. You cannot serve yourself. It mm. has to be somebody else, somebody some else. other committee sitting and deciding. deciding. I'll give you a classic example. Today, mm. a member of parliament gets 50,000 rupees per month for communication expenses. Mm. Communication expenses is not even 15,000 rupees a month. Yes. Ah. You cannot pay an allowance, you know why? Mm. The law says very clearly, if a payment is can be measured, the bill is there. Mm. You cannot give an allowance. You, cannot. Mm. you have to tell them, provide the bills, we make payment. Provide the bills, we make, make payment. payment. So the Parliament, mm. who sits at the top, mm. deciding on decisions, on various issues, dole out for themselves, Self dole service. out for themselves, mm. which is totally wrong. Right. So I can go on and on because there's so much to discuss. Unfortunately, that is uh, time all is the a factor. time we have. Yes, this evening for face to face. My guests this evening were Kesar Lal Gunasekara and Rehan Jayavikrama. Kesar, Mr. Kesar Lal representing the SLFP and uh, Mr. Jayavikrama representing the SJB. A lot for the viewers to ponder on. Uh, a lot of food for thought on what you should be doing come election season. How to use your vote wisely. Do go and vote. Exercise your franchise. Make sure to know that what you do at the elections will determine your life for the next five years and also in the foreseeable future. And with that note, I want to wrap up face to face. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me today and sharing your very valuable insights with me and also our viewers this evening.
Thank you. Chairman. Thank you. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. <laughs> and that's the way it was on face to face. Take care and have yourselves a great night.